democracy looks like. Uh, excuse me, can I ask you um, what it is uh, you're advocating for? You have a sign that says, uh, yes. we are a nation of immigrants and refugees and Native Americans and former slaves and their descendants. That's everybody. <laughs> That's everybody. Um, so did you guys ever were ever to make it in front of uh, the ICE detention facility? No, we didn't We didn't no. head there. No. Um, so I guess, uh, now I guess they get like $30,000 in federal funding. Is that what I read correctly? We weren't, that was not what we were talking okay, about okay. today. We were talking about what the general picture of what's going on with immigration in the United States right. and in particular just that, that people are being detained here and this is our tax dollars being spent for this. Right. So I guess, uh, what, what is it that you're advocating against then, or, or for? What we're advocating for is that if people are refugees, that they should come to be able to come to this country and not be treated like criminals, be welcomed here, and be given, be given refuge. My grandparents were refugees from uh, over 100 years ago from the, from the Tsar in Russia. The, the situations that they were facing at that time were exactly the same kind of situations that people who are fleeing Central America are facing right now. They were welcomed into this country, not totally welcome because you had xenophobia back then. There's still racism and, and prejudice against Jews, which is my people. But we did take them in. We didn't separate families. They passed by the Statue of Liberty. There was an, there was an inscription on that Statue of Liberty that said that welcomed them, them into this country. And they had supportive communities that, were, that, that took them in. That's what we want for the people that are coming into this country now that are fleeing the police that are flee fleeing gangs, fleeing violence, fleeing political oppression in Central America or anywhere in the world. Right, and uh, yeah, 100 years ago there was a lot of, uh, particularly a lot of violence in Russia, especially right. those fleeing like communist Russia as well. My, my grandfather right. escaped from Cuba on a, okay. a dust cover plane, right? Exactly, yeah. yes. Um, so what do you think of the, um, the presentation that people say, well, there are like nine consulates in Mexico that people could apply to sign up for asylum if that's what they're escaping, because there is a lot of violence in Mexico, right? Yes. 100 politicians were murdered, I think, this past year alone, right? Right. right. Um, what do you think about instead of like endangering their kids, to cross that desert, instead of going to the consulates or the one embassy, there's there's not there's ten buildings total that could go up there to sign up for asylum without endangering their children to come to, to, to come here. If that's the case, if that's what they're experiencing, if there is a way, this is the country that says we are a nation of immigrants. This is the country people look to and it's like, I need I need some place to come to that is that's gonna that's gonna welcome me. This the entire almost the entire nation is immigrants here. We are we are the hope and the light of the world. And we should be we should be opening our doors in that same way. Yeah, and, and the immigration immigration that, that did arrive here that helped build up this country uh, a long right. time ago were Western civilization of types of immigrants, right? Because there's culture clashes like for the immigrants going to Europe right now, that's mm -hmm. not really voting well with European culture and Western culture, right? Well, there's a dynamic tension when when people come into a country. There is a dynamic tension while the assimilation process takes place and cultures merge that what that process happens ends up enriching everybody involved and so we have a we have a country now that's much richer for all the immigrants that have come to it if this would be if it were if it, this was all white people it would be a pretty boring country probably um, we are we are enriched by the diversity that the, of the people that come here and so it's there's no loss that we're not sacrificing anything by taking people in here Right. Um, I wouldn't say it would be a boring country. I mean, you have a lot of Europeans that kind of are white, right? They're not boring. Switzerland right. and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you know, my grandfather's from Cuba, my mother's Bolivian. You know, I think right. this sort of different cultures are interesting. Yes. Uh, but there's some cultures that kind of clash in a way that they come here and they would want to increase the size of government, right? Uh, like kind of vote for a larger government. When what people do you think are coming that, uh, here as refugees, I don't think that they're really thinking about the size of government. But they do. <laughs> but when they become legalized, when they can vote, they go towards overwhelmingly Democrat, right? They vote well, for a larger government. I, that remains to be seen. Well, you, know, the, you, yeah. you, tend, you know, the, the immigrants that are coming from Central America are very <coughs> largely Catholic. They're going to find some commonality within the Republican Party. You know, the, the, how, how, what ends up happening with how they vote, that's not really my concern. I'm not, you know, I'm not take, wanting to take immigrants into this country because they're going to be a part of one political party or against one political party or for an ideology or against an ideology. This is about just being human to people who are in, who are struggling and in need. All right, so like the separation of children and their families, that's a big thing that you find to be a uh, Oh yeah, of course. Um, so would you find it to be abhorrent? Would you find FDR himself to be abhorrent? 
because he separated the families of uh, Asians in internment camps in California. That, that was, yeah, that was awful. It yeah. was awful. Okay, right, all right, that's right. good. Yeah, consistency yeah. is great. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and that was done by a by a president who is who is a Democratic president. Right. 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 What do you think? The, of, I'm um, saying this is yeah. not something about <clears throat> political parties. Right. This is this is just about literally about a. a just how it is to be human right. in the United yeah, and, States and, and right I want now. to find out that you have good consistency right. or yeah. integrity with that. I think that's oh, awesome course, and yeah. to see that. What do you think about uh, victimless crimes that separates uh, children in the family, like uh, for cannabis? And these are the kind of, uh, you know, drugs on the market that people just consume for themselves. Well, that's not what we're marching about here today. But yeah, of course, if they there are, if there are, if, if people who are, are committing small crimes that are that are either victimless or have very you know that are misdemeanors and violations yeah. and that kind of thing. Sh of course, shouldn't be se you know separated from their children. They shouldn't have you know everything they own taken away from them and their right. you know their property. Of course, all that. Right. Yeah. And I'm I'm not a pro-Trump guy myself. Yeah. But I do acknowledge that these policies that he's enforcing were were put into place by Democrats uh, during the Clinton years, right? S some of them were, and some of them predate that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, what these, do you think about the the lack of outrage when Obama deported two? 5 million it was immigrants. not a lack of uh, outrage in, in in immigrant communities. Obama was known as the deporter in chief. As the deporter in chief, right? Okay, right. all right, all right. Cool. So, so you've been doing this uh, crusade against it for quite some time. Then you would say, I wouldn't say I've been crusading. I think that there is something that is especially abhorrent about separating families as a as a matter of policy. Right. Um, you know, on mass, what we're doing now. This is different than you know the the what what Obama was doing was. Small potatoes compared to this, really. Well, he's done it. Yeah. He's deported more people than all presidents. He deported combined. more people. The end of the but album. the way he treated them when he was deporting them, this was the the policy that you're seeing right now was something that was designed to punish families and to send a message back to Central America by abusing children in the United States. The photos in our, well, with our government doing that, yeah. and so the, the the you know the the photos that the Immigration Service released that show families on blankets that was that the, they were torturing children and separating them from their families to make a point in, in down in Central America to people who are who are facing whether they're gonna live or die and having no place to go and and here and here we are saying well if you come here we're gonna we're gonna separate you from your children and you you know like that is just an insane policy yeah. that's that's an insane policy Obama was never doing anything like Actually, that. Actually, those photos came from Obama's policies. They were investigated a couple of years ago, and that's where those photos came I'm from. I'm looking at things that are happening today. Yeah, those, those photos that we've seen today actually came from Obama's pol policy. No, there are, these are photos of things that are happening today. People are going through these facilities, and and they are witnessing today people who are in exactly this situation. Right. My last question then. Yes. Um, when, when people do come here, even when they vote, left right. or right, right? Yeah. Uh, voting for government it requires taxation, right? And taxation was when you take people's property without their consent, uh, what happens when you don't pay your taxes? Well, right? you when go to you jail. are a citizen, you are consenting to 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 tax. To tax. Well, there's, right. there's no law yeah. that says that you have to pay income tax. There's no law in the book. No, no one can find it. Yeah. So um, there's no law in the book that says you have to pay income tax, but advocating for taxation, and of course, if you don't mm -hmm. pay your taxes, you go to jail. That separates the families and their children. People die in jail. People have died in jail for not giving the government their money. They don't haul children off. They separate their parents, though. If you well, I don't think most people in the United States and who don't pay taxes end up going to jail for not paying taxes. I think they most do. people in, in the United States who don't pay taxes end up having a <coughs> conflict with the IRS and then eventually paying their taxes. After that, they, they put a lien on their house and take the property. There's a guy yes. named. Uh, this may not be an interview you want to finish. Okay, it's up to you. Uh, I'm, I'm, it's, it's no, it's, I'm, it's, it's, yeah. we're doing great. Thank yeah. You. <laughs> this is my last, anyway. last area. Oh, my only thing is, I'm also against uh, the forceful separation of families and their children, right? right. And well, uh, any human being. And any human being, right, right? Exactly, right. right. Uh, especially children, right? right. And I just find uh, myself. I'm a very uh, anti government meddling in our affairs in our own lives. It's like mm -hmm. there are right now with these with these children and their families, right? Right. So I just view then. For me, consistently, there's one area, uh, area I think uh, we should look and examine it would be taxation because if you don't pay it, you, you go to jail. And that separates right. families and, and children too. But when you live in a country that has a government, the government has to be funded by something. We, we, need, we need government for many reasons and the way that we, that we have that government is by taxation. That you can live in a, I guess you could buy, you know, find an island someplace and try to have a, uh, you know, have, ha have a life without a government, but it's going to be a tougher life. Do you think you could live without a government yourself? Do you need a politician to dictate what you need to do? Or do I don't need a politician to okay, dictate yeah. what I'm going to do. Yeah, then we don't need government no, then. No, I, I, I find people to represent me imperfectly, most of them <laughs> very imperfectly, and I complain about it. Right. But 
yes, I want to have people that are, you know, putting paving streets and putting down traffic and having cops and, and you know, even at times armies and having, you know, the ability to, to respond to crises, that there are things that governments can do that just are not going to be done by, by private businesses and private individuals. And I'm willing to, ta to pay taxes for it. I don't think that's an unreasonable thing to, to want. And you know what? It's also part of American tradition to complain about how the it taxes is. are used. It is. war against taxes. Yeah. yeah. Right. Actually, businesses build this stuff. Businesses in Virginia build roads here. Uh, the government doesn't build roads at all here in Virginia. Uh, so, I mean, so you can imagine that, like ABC well, is a government monopoly on liquor, right? Well, we pay we pay a gasoline tax, and, right? And that yeah, gasoline tax yeah. is used to, to pave roads in this. In so the, the government state of just selects uh, the people, to, the businesses to build it, but businesses build it. So businesses already can be shown to build right, these well, roads. Well, as contractors for the government, right? Right? right. Can we right. remove the middleman and choose ourselves the best ones in the market to build? Well, it? Like I think that you know, would the, be very hard for me to walk up and say, well, you know, I want that square foot of bi of road paved over here. What yeah. are you going to charge? What are you going to charge well, me for I mean, that? The, well, okay. Well, it doesn't hook up to that square foot. Well, we'll work that out. That's somebody else's. Well, it's not That's that why I have a government. I mean, that. it's not. Yeah, thank I mean, you very much. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs>